Oh. Yep, there you go, whenever you're ready. This is a 1903 Oldsmobile. It was William's favorite car, and the one beside it is a salesman's sample. They would put that on a wagon and then take it around to the people and show them what they would be getting. The car sold for a hundred dollars a pound. Already made a mistake. It was a dollar a pound and there's 650 pounds. Samora, there are only two of them in possession anymore. It's a 1909 Mora. A Rambler, 1910 Buick. You see that the steering wheels are still on the right hand side. Now we go to a Ford that has the steering wheel on the, on the left. Down here we have a Harley. Everybody has to have a Harley. A Bantam. They were made in Butler, Pennsylvania. They later went it, stopped making the, the Bantam and then they went into making the Jeep. This is a brush. It has a wooden axle. It's a Sears, 1911 Sears. You could buy a car out of the Sears catalog. You could get a house out of the Sears catalog. And the boxes that they came in became the garage. A little grant. Here's a very small part of our license plate collection. We have the largest collection of license plates in the world, and they're all in these compartments on state, and also we have them from other countries. The Simplex service cycle, that was used by the Western Union. Do what, how? It went out of range. So let me see if I can. Okay. Okay, we're good. Dad, sorry about that. This is a Maxwell. Alice Ramsey in 1909 went across the country with three non driving women, and she was the first woman to drive across the country. Maxwell was made famous by Jack Benny, and he never even owned a Maxwell. Stanley Steamer, it's run by water, uses a gallon of water per mile. This is a Chevrolet. Louis Chevrolet was in France and was looking for some logo to use. He saw the description here that was on the wallpaper, wrote his name across the front of it and thought it looked kind of neat, and that's why Chevrolet has that logo to this day. It's a little Plymouth. Ford was a local car. Lady down the valley owned it. Her husband had had it. He passed away. She put it up on blocks and later gave it to William. This is a Carroll, 1920 Carroll. Mr. Carroll built 51 cars, put them on a railroad car to go to California. This has what they call the California top, which looks like a convertible top, but it does not go down. The train car was stopped because of bad weather. The Everything froze inside, so he lost the 50 cars. He kept one, and this is the only one that's in existence of those. This is a Ford milk truck that's here on loan. It was out of Altoona, Evie family. 
Pierce Arrow has very distinctive headlights. This is a 1915 Ford. It's a depot hack. They were used mostly as station wagons. They would go to the train stations and pick up people for, for the uh, resorts and things of that type. This is a 1919 Brewster. Tommy Manville was the first owner of this car. He was many married man out of New York. And it has leather fenders and this, the uh, sides paneling. This is a 1909 Studebaker Electric. This was used down in Washington between the House and the Senate. There were only two of them made. One was Peggy and one was Tommy. This is Tommy. Tommy was down at the Elegance of Hershey this past June and won the award that you can see in front of us that was given to by the Historic Vehicle Association the This Car Matters Award. This is a 1937 Cord. It's won many awards in the Classic Car Club. The, the Cord has what they call the old coffin nose by the styling. It has hidden headlights and front wheel drive. A lot of people think that that's something new. It's not. This is a 1936 Duesenberg. It's the only 12-cylinder Duesenberg that was ever made. One of the little rascals was the first owner of this car and it was made to try to rejuvenate the Duesenberg company. It did not work with the 12 cylinders but it is a very unique car and the hood ornament is different than most of the Duesenbergs. This is a 198 International. This is all original. As you can see, there's been nothing done to it, but it's such a, a fabulous car, such a very large car. It's one of the largest cars that was made. And so we've tried to keep it in the condition that it presently in and have it in the museum. Nineteen forty six Willie's Jeep. Just a neat car to show you some of the, the new things, the Jeep that they have. We have a lot of toys in the collection. This is an engine from a Cadillac, 1914 Cadillac. You want your picture taken in an antique car, you can come here. This is a Mitchell. This is a 1933 Duesenberg. It's what they call a long wheelbase coupe. It's another one that is not a convertible, but it's a fabulous car. A large car. Duesenbergs love to, to go fast. You take it on the highway, you really forget how fast you're going. This is a very unique car, 1952 Verrill Wolf Wagon. It was designed by a Chrysler designer by the name of Thomas Verrill, and he wanted to have it put into production. Chrysler Company said that it was too large for the average garage. It's about 27 feet long. Has a very interesting front to it there. The, the uh, different labors and things. Very long three-quarter inch fiberglass. It's a great car to drive. It causes a lot of 
interest. Herbie the Love Bug. Everybody knows Herbie the Love Bug. It's a great car. We love to have it here. This is, car was in the first movie, The Love Bug. It was also the main car in Herbie Rides Again. We also have Herbie from Disney on Ice, and we had the stunt car from the uh, Herbie Rides Again. This is the engine with Tucker. Again, the story of Mr. Tucker was one similar to Mr. Carroll. He built 51 cars. He got into a lawsuit, which he won, but by the time it was settled, he didn't have the money to continue on. There were 51 of them built. This is number 13. And the maroon one is the tin goose. That was the first one that he built. You can't see the front of both of them, but the fronts are different. The heights are different. The first 25 cars were all different to a certain extent. He sold them as the first new car in a hundred years, 1948. The seats were interchangeable. If the front seat wore out, you could put it to the back and move the back one front. He tried to make it that they were very safe. They all had safety glass and that if they were in an accident, the glass would shatter among itself, but it would not shatter out to hurt the people. It's a 1914 Scripps Booth. Tennis player Eleanor Sears of the, the teens wanted a car that had the elegance of a Rolls Royce the smallness of a Model T and the Mercedes Radiator. And this is what Mr. Scripps Booth made. When William purchased this car, he called Mr. Scripps Booth, told him he had it. Mr. Scripps Booth said, I don't remember ever making that car. So William invited him to come to the museum. When he did, he came back and he stood and he said, I did make that, I remember. That was the showcase car at the town car exhibit that the Peterson Museum in Los Angeles had several years ago. They had it shipped, we had it shipped out there for them. We have a lot of pedal cars, we have a lot of toys, The license plates, we have the largest collection of automobile emblems in the world. Largest collection of license plates in the world. 